is the fact that the U.S. Senate has passed the Biosecure Act. What does it mean and what is the implication? Vishal Manchanda is joining us to talk to us about that. Vishal, hi, good to be speaking with you. Thanks so much for uh, taking this call. Um, is this uh, act largely on lines of what was expected and what do you think are the biggest beneficiaries to watch out for? Right. Good morning. Uh, so basically, the status right now on the Biosecure Act is the U.S. House of Representatives has passed the passed the draft, and now it is it is up to the U.S. House and Senate to also uh, vote in favor of the act to become for the act to become a law. So there are two more steps to go, uh, two important steps to go before it becomes a law. So until uh, there is still uncertainty as to whether it will become a law or not. But if it does, then we, we will have a significant benefit coming to India. So basically what the Biosecure Act does is uh, it it is it disincentivizes the U.S. players from outsourcing pharmaceutical innovation work to Chinese companies. So they have specified a few names uh, specifically where outsourcing should reduce. And they have they would be kind of penalizing for those companies that continue to outsource to those Chinese names. Uh, so if you look at uh, how much uh, U.S. is dependent on these Chinese names, I think about uh, 4 to $5 billion of revenue uh, is uh, coming from, these Chinese players are generating from the U.S. Uh, com US innovator pharma companies. So assuming uh, the, the, uh, this becomes a law in the U.S., we'll have about $5 billion of revenue transitioning from Chinese companies to alternative destinations, including India. India may be a meaningful beneficiary because it's, a, it's the next logical, uh, ex lo logical alternative for, for China. So I think the entire, entire gamut of CDMO companies, uh, starting from DVs, uh, Newland, Suven, uh, even uh, companies like RT Pharma Labs, Jubilant Pharma, which cater to this space, Dishman Carbogenamsis, uh, they stand to benefit from this transition from China. It will happen over a period of eight years. The three categories here, one is oral generic, second is complex generics and third are injectables. From our viewer standpoint, if one has to, let's say, take a bet on a particular product category and I can throw in, let's say, you know, uh, CDMO in it, which is one product category which would benefit the most? So like we, uh, different companies have got different capabilities. Uh, companies like Sengene uh, can actually take up the large molecule work, which is the biologics outsourcing. Then most other companies like Sovain, Newland, etc., they can take the small molecule work, which are oral, which are generally oral, but also injectable. But so most of, uh, most Indian companies are into the API side. So we won't do the, we generally don't do, do the final formulation. We only do the APIs or intermediates. So that's that's the extent of outsourcing US does to Indian companies as uh, of now. If I look at uh, the the setup in the pharma space, there are two stocks when this news came out of, uh, you know, um, when this news came out, they moved up disproportionately. One was Piramal and second to a large extent was DVs. Is the market understanding right that TVs and to some extent uh, Piramal would be the biggest beneficiaries in course of time? So they, they are the largest players. If you look at uh, the CDMO space in India, Peramal and DVs are the largest player in the category uh, among the names. So probably uh, being large, the capacity to invest, create capacities is uh, is differentiated. But uh, I would kind of, uh, so if I look at Peramal, I think they have a leveraged balance sheet. So for them to create further capacities uh, to kind of take the additional business, would be difficult. But Peramal, having said that, Peramal has got existing capacities which are unutilized. And I'm not sure whether uh, they, they have an order book to support those existing capacities and whether they can take a new order book. Uh, so all of those things will need to be uh, detailed before we take a call on each name. Vishal, I think uh, the, the, the other way to look at that question is whether there is a further room for upmove on some of these counters because um, as I stand corrected, it's only the house that has passed this. There are a couple of more steps to it. Do you think there is a room for further upside on these stocks or do you think they're pricing this uh, Biosecure Act already? I think it's, they're more or less pricing it uh, as of now. Because we'll also see new players emerging to take a share of the pie. Like if you look at uh, 
these larger indian names like dr reddy lupin they they also have a cdmo presence they also have been creating capacities in anticipation so not just that the existing players but we we are also seeing new players trying to take mileage out of it and again there is uncertainty too whether whether or not it finally uh, comes out in the shape that we anticipate right and just lastly before i let you go um what are the top bets uh, within the pharma space as a whole biosecure act or not so uh, i think uh, we don't have a coverage on uh, so just one name that we cover that could benefit from the biosecure act is uh, jubilant pharmova so they they do some uh, contract manufacturing for sterile injectables about 20% of the revenue plus they also have uh, contract research drug discovery so that that can be a beneficiary uh here but we'll have to i i think we'll have to exercise some uh, restraint now at the current valuation Thanks very much. Exercise some restraint at the current valuations. That's the view coming in on the entire pharma basket and what this news could potentially mean. If you like this video, then like, share, and subscribe to ET Now. 